Hi there. DPRK leader Kim Jong-un just wrapped up a two-day visit to Beijing last week. It was his third trip to China in three months. The visit came after he sat down face-to-face -face with U.S. President Donald Trump in Singapore, the first ever DPRK-U.S. summit in history. While South Korea says it shares China's strategic goal of denuclearization of the peninsula, how can the two countries cooperate to achieve this? Will we eventually witness the complete nuclear disarmament of the DPRK? What effect will the Trump-Kim summit have on the fate of the region? To discuss these issues and more, I'm very happy to be joined in the studio by Moon Chung in Special Security Advisor to South Korean President Moon Jae-in. That's our topic. This is a dialogue. I'm Yang Rei. Welcome to Dialogue, sir. What do you think of the message that uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un delivers to the rest of the world through the third summit meeting that he had with President Xi Jinping in three months? It is very amazing, and I think it is extremely positive, because now President Xi Jinping has cultivated personal ties with Chairman Kim Jong-un that will c greatly contribute to the process of denuclearization as well as economic modernization in North Korea. And what do you think are the major issues they have discussed in your hunch, in your estimation? Well, uh, apparently, you know, the pre uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un should have you know, uh, informed President Xi Jinping of his meeting with President Trump in Singapore. And also, they should have been talking about you know, the ways of means of realizing North Korea's denuclearization. And they should have talked about uh, uh, economic cooperation with North Korea. That is why you know, both leaders have said that uh, uh, China and DPRK will be pursuing both strategic and tactical cooperation in the future. I think it's a very positive development. American policymakers and observers who follow the event very closely said, I mean the event uh, DPRK US summit in Singapore on June the 12th, they said China won huge. China is the biggest winner. Do you agree? Yeah, China is a winner, but in my opinion, everybody is a loser, as a winner. Everybody you know, is a loser, a winner. Oh yeah, the reason is very simple. U.S. got denuclearization promise from Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un got a new relationship with the United States as well as a security guarantee from President Trump. And China got what? Double suspension of you know, nuclear missile activities. In Chinese so dancing, that's what China wants, yes. exactly. As well as you know, two-track approach to denuclearization and peace treaty. But President Trump came under fire from the establishment, from American policymakers, that uh, he had nothing to gain through this major concession, quote unquote, namely suspending the massive military maneuvers. No, I don't think so. You don't because think so. Because his, de his <coughs> decision to suspend, allocate U.S. combined military exercise and training, is you know, could be you know. You know, threefold. First, he wanted to reward North Korea for North Korea's behavior. Mm -hmm. North Korea has suspended its you know, nuclear missile activities for the past seven months. At the same time, North Korea released three Americans detained in North Korea, and also North Korea destroyed its uh, nuclear test site in Punggyeri. And also, Chairman Kim Jong-un told President Trump I will be destroying a you know, missile engine test site too. Therefore, you know, it is kind of reciprocal measure by President Trump. At the same time, it has uh, some kind of anticipatory function. Okay, despite you know, domestic and overseas opposition, I am now suspending the ROK US combined military exercise. Now it is your, your turn to return to me, particularly in the direction of denuclearization. And in the sense, you know, I think it is a very wise decision on the part of President Trump. What's the driving force behind a flurry of a proactive diplomacy by Mr. Kim Jong-un? That was a big surprise for the world. Obviously, he wanted to change the direction of the country. Is that because of the country is starving and uh, eco economically they are on Not the brink starving. of a collapse? Not starving. Because of the severity of the UN sanctions? You know, Chairman Kim Jong-un told President Moon Jae-in that if we frequently talk with the United States and have trust with the United States and have non-aggression treaty with the United States. Why should we suffer while having nuclear weapons? 
Then for the first time he admitted that uh, having nuclear weapons, North Korea has been suffering. And second, if terms are right, meaning what? More talks, trust, non-aggression treaty, he's willing to give up nuclear weapons. But do you believe the suspension of military maneuvers is a, or amounts to the security assurance that the DPRK has been seeking that China failed to supply? But the United States this time around promised that so long as he is able to rid the Korean Peninsula of the nuclear capability, then they won't seek regime change. Is that written into something like a formal document or a statement? If you look at the you know, Singapore or Santosa in the declaration, mm -hmm. the preamble, introduction of the declaration clearly says that U.S. will give denuclearization to the, uh, no, the U.S. will give a uh, security guarantee and new relationship to North Korea. In return, North Korea will give denuclearization, complete denuclearization to the United States. There is exchange you know, between Washington and Pyongyang. What has left me puzzled, Professor Moon, is time and again, Washington says, we're going to maintain the maximum pressure so that the DPRK is likely to buckle if they refuses to yield to the demand from Washington, D.C. Now, why the military maneuvers have been suspended? I mean, uh, the, Mr. Kim Jong-un has failed, allegedly, to provide the United States of America with the details concerning CVID. But, you know, if you, it is my reading that complete denuclearization is synonymous with complete verifiable and irreversible denuclearization. Is that the wishful thinking of yours? Not wishful no. thinking, but as to details and specifics mm -hmm. of you know, complete denuclearization should be worked out between perhaps Secretary Pompeo and his counterpart from North Let's Korea. look at this uh, process this way. Okay, yes, President Donald Trump says it's going to be a process. That's no easy job for him to say this is a process instead of being achieved overnight. Having said this, do you think gr working groups have been established to, to lay groundwork, for example, for the establishment of embassies on both sides, and then uh, ahead of that, a peace treaty is to be signed uh, between the two Koreas uh, that involves, of course, China and the United States? Yeah, it, it, it will take some time. Uh, you know, if you go back to No South Korean Summit Declaration on April 27th, uh, there is a clear indication that uh, both sides will try to uh, adopt declaration to end the Korean War within this year. And afterward, there will be process, process toward the peace treaty okay, and peace regime. Okay. That it will take some time, but that those actions will be you know, implemented in tandem with North Korea's denuclearization efforts. Therefore, I would say that uh, that is what China has been proposing, so-called the two-track approach. Therefore, you know, North Korea goes through the process of denuclearization, and the South Korea and the United States come up with uh, some kinds of you know, uh, peace arrangement with uh, North Korea. And that is what China has been proposing all along. Here is a tabloid version about the, the latest development on the Korean Peninsula. Do you think President Moon Jae-in, Mr. Kim Jong-un, and President Donald Trump are likely to be the co-winners or laureates of Nobel Peace Prize? What do you think of the chance? No, our president made it very clear. Nobel Peace Prize goes to President Trump, and we will have a peace. Well, that, that's a pretty uh, wise uh, punchline from your president. What do you make of Mr. Kim Jong-un? What do you think of this man? He's a uh, so different from uh, uh, his uh, grandfather and father in that he started to use uh, airplanes instead of the, the bulletproof trains uh, to protect his uh, pr security. I mean, in many areas, he has achieved breakthroughs, amazing ones. He has a different background of upbringing, okay? He was sent to Switzerland. He studied there about 60 years, came back. Therefore, he knows what the outside world is. And I, I think that his father should have you know, and, uh, made a bringing um, him mm -hmm. as a leader. And you know, I, when I saw him in Panmunjom on April 27th, you I saw him. Tell you yeah, saw I saw him, him yeah. and I you know, shook the hand with him. And, but he's, you know, he looked very decisive and he showed the mastery of issues. Okay? He was not that impressive as often portrayed by Western media. He was quite rational. 
He was a very pragmatic and realistic, you know. But he could be very brutal in dismissing opponents politically, right? Well, th that is a part of his power, you know, consolidation. But anyhow, the way he showed in trying to solve the nuclear problem and building peace on the Korean Peninsula, he had shown very pragmatic, realistic, and rational behavior. What happened in your country when the two leaders crossed the 38th, uh, no, 38th the military parallel? Demarcation line. Yeah, yeah, the military demarcation line. What has happened in your country in the immediate aftermath? When, when they saw Mr. Kim Jong-un and his South Korean counterpart cross the, um, the military mark, I mean the demilitarization mark, right? What do you call that? The threshold yeah, along the 38th parallel. Demarcation line, military demarcation, demarcation line. line. Yeah. Tears, cheers, what else? Do they really believe that this man in the DPRK will make a sea difference and will bring about peace? More than that, you know. In other More words, than that. You know, Chairman Kim Jong crossed military demarcation line, and President Moon Jae-in, you know, kept him. When can I get into North Korea? Mm -hmm. And Chairman Kim Jong Un told him, "Why don't you close? Why don't you? Why don't we?" crossed the, that line together. Together. Mm. And then they crossed the line together and came back. But that shows what? This military demarcation line is really artificial creation. Well, that, that was, I think, that sent a very, you know, really shocking message to both North Koreans and South Koreans. Professor Moon, as a very senior uh, policymaker in your country, did you forecast something major when the process of Pyeongchang Winter Olympics uh, uh, first uh, started uh, with the two teams uh, walking into the stadium uh, almost hand in hand, um, did you have the feeling that something's going to happen? No. No. Look, go back to last year, 2017. North Korea undertook 15 ballistic missile testings and undertook 6 nuclear testing with a destructive power of more than 100 kiloton. And tension was very high, and the Trump administration was deliberating on the military action against North Korea. We Koreans were shot it last year, but all of this year, everything began to change. North Korea sent a special delegation to South Korea, just opening ceremony of the Pyeongchang Olympic, and they, North Korea also sent you know, another delegation to the closing ceremony of the Pyeongchang Olympic. We sent our special delegation, special envoy to North Korea. And then President, well, Chairman Kim Jong-un was saying that I want to have a summit with the South Korean president. I want to set up the hotline with South Korea. Okay, yes, I want to give up nuclear weapons. If there is a so-called no threat, no military threat and threat to regime. And he was even telling that the that, uh, you know, will of you know, his father and grandfather, okay? They were all surprising, surprising development. The whole world was caught off balance, totally unprepared. You are watching dialogue with uh, Professor Moon Jae-in from uh, South Korea. We're discussing implications of the third visit, an official visit by Mr. Kim Jong-un, paramount leader of the DPRK to Beijing and the implications of uh, uh, this uh, process of denuclearization and uh, we'll be back in a short while. Stay with us please. So the peace treaty, now will that lay, if it were to be signed, that by all parties concerned in the game. First of all, for the, as to the prospects of peace in the Korean Peninsula, I'm very optimistic. Of course, there's going to be several obstacles. But however, no South Korea and the United States, even China, can join the adoption of the declaration to end the Korean War. American troops uh, will, will be restored. Uh, yes. And under what, under what circumstances will the forward the military presence be reduced to a level where China would feel comfortable and will also be proactively involved in the process of peace and peacemaking? There is also a function of North Korean you know, move toward the demilitarization. Okay. If there is a no nuclear weapons in North Korea, and if there is an 
new peace treaties and peace regime on the Korean Peninsula, then it will be very difficult for the United States to justify the continued peace of American troops. Welcome back, Professor Moon. So, the peace treaty. Now, will that lay, if it were to be signed by all parties concerned in the game, will it uh, prepare the DPRK for what happened in China 40 years ago? I mean, this year witnesses the 40th anniversary of China's reform and opening up. Mr. Deng Xiaoping, our late senior leader, was the architect of China's modernization drive. And the DPRK also badly needs such a, a an iconic figure in shaping its cause of development and peace, of course. So what do you think of the prospects uh, and the silver lining on the Korean Peninsula? First of all, first of all, for the as the prospects of peace on the Korean Peninsula, I'm very optimistic. Of course, there could be several obstacles. But however, no South Korea and the United States, even China, can join the adoption of the declaration to end the Korean War. And then the armistice agreement will be nullified. Then there could be new peace regime on the Korean Peninsula by you know, signing uh, peace treaty. In this case, in, the, in this case, the North, South Korea, China, U.S. can involve in it. And of course, this process should be tied up to North Korea's denuclearization. Therefore, North Korea should show very concrete moves toward the denuclearization. If that happens <coughs> within this coming year, at uh, this year and the coming next year, then I think the prospects for peace on the Korean Peninsula will be very high. Here are another two majors on the agenda, Mr. Moon removal of American troops from the Korean Peninsula and deployment of sand. Will the two things be moved out of the, uh, the volatile region of the Korean Peninsula? But not now, but uh, when North Korea denuclearizes, okay? Midterm or long term, do you think this is a part of the security assurance for the DPRK, which promised somehow, according to the media reports that I read, DPRK promised to move uh, or reduce the presence of its uh, artillery. The artillery poses a real threat to the security of a soul. You're a capital city, right? No, the SAD is designed to aim at North Korea's missiles. incoming mi ballistic missiles mm -hmm. and possibly with a nuclear warhead. Mm -hmm. But as to the long range artillery pieces deployed along DMZ, demilitarized zone, then we have uh, other systems like a patriot system and kind of things. They are totally different. Therefore, if there are no military, no missile and nuclear threat from North Korea, it will be extremely difficult for the South Korean government, even the U.S. government, to justify continuing uh, deployment of THAAD in South Korea. Mm -hmm. And do you think uh, American troops uh, will, we, will be withdrawn? Uh, yeah. And uh, what? Under what circumstances will the forward military presence be reduced to a level where China would feel comfortable and will also be proactively involved in the process of the peace and peacemaking? That is also a function of North Korean in a move toward the denuclearization. Okay. If there is a no nuclear weapons in North Korea and if there is a new peace treaties and peace regime on the Korean Peninsula, then it will be very difficult for the United States mm -hmm. to justify the continued presence of American troops, okay? And in South Korea, South Korea can be divided, you know. Conservatives wanted to have continued presence of American forces in South Korea. The liberals and progressives could have a different views, but it is too early to talk about the American forces in South Korea at this, you know, this, at this in a moment. And plus, you know, there could be, you know, the adjustment of its status, its, you know, missions, it's, uh, you know, uh, goals, you know, they will be changed, you know. What do you think of the Chinese influence, if any, on the DPRK? Because they, there have been controversial comments on the role China could play. A majority of the Chinese, to be honest, believe uh, there's a limit to what we can do. We could not freely leverage our so-called influence on the DPRK. Uh, for a while, China felt that it had been left marginalized in the process when the DPRK offered to have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with Washington. Um, of course, this has been reversed uh, to our greatest relief. But um, 
overseas, overseas observers say that the influence is mutual uh, between China and the DPRK. However, um, China never ever says, look, uh, the, 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 the friendship and the mutually defense treaty between the two countries will be revitalized. And uh, we perhaps have built the culture of ambiguity on this critical issue. Article 6 or what? 9 uh, in, in this uh, defense treaty. And therefore, we are not sure if we could uh, exert enormous influence on this, uh, uh, what is called the rogue state or whatever. But what is important is the degree of dependency of North Korea on China. If the dependency is uh, deeper and wider, then China will have a more leverage. What is happening right now is that phenomenon. Now, North Korean leader is counting on President Xi Jinping, okay, for not only just you know, you know, political economic assurance as well as the, the very process of denuclearization. Mm -hmm. Therefore, compared with the last year and before, China now has enormous leverage over North Korea because North Korea wants Chinese help. There is a real leverage on the part of China. But in the way of China's economic assistance or investment in the DPRK, I'm afraid it's the UN economic sanctions. Uh, some already start calling for lifting the UN sanctions to pave the way for, you know, uh, the building of a mutual trust. What do you think of the, lively, uh, the likelihood? It all depends on North Korea. If North Korea come up with a very tangible and visible move toward the denuclearization, it is possible for China and Russia uh, to come up with a new resolution to you know, relax san UN sanctions against North Korea. But if North Korea does not come up with any tangible you know, move toward the denuclearization, even China is likely to uh, retain existing sanction regime against North Korea. Regarding the Chinese influence, uh, Professor Moon, China is currently in a very difficult position, I'm afraid, because of the mounting tensions of the trade war that has been embarked upon by President Trump between Washington and Beijing. Um, and therefore, if we get too close to the DPRK, then China is likely to be accused of uh, you know, leveraging our resources uh, without consulting Americans. Um, so whatever China does, um, we, will be closely monitored and supervised by the other side across the Pacific Ocean. It, under this ad, I mean, adverse circumstance, can China do anything? I mean, it, do we have any margin or leeway for the maneuvers? No, I don't think that. It is, I think it is somewhat misleading to make a link between North Korean nuclear issue and the trade conflict between China and the United States. Because now there is a common goal of denuclearizing North Korea between President Xi Jinping and President Trump. Therefore, I really don't think the President Trump would try to make a linkage between North Korea nuclear you, issue uh, and trade issue. But uh, Professor Moon, you may not have read very carefully the book by Mr. Donald Trump, The Art of the Deal. He is a businessman. He looks at things uh, uh, in a way of uh, conducting transactional deals. So he uses whatever approaches that he lays hands on for the single purpose of winning big in the negotiations. And therefore, the one China principle was abused in the first few days of his taking the office. And he uses the DPRK to deliver a warning to, the D to, to China. If you fail to cooperate with me closely, I'm going to give you some color to CC in Chinese. <laughs> no, but I really don't think don't the think Chinese so, government would take any kinds of you know, action deviant from the American position. Because uh, China, US, South Korea, Japan, Russia, they all have a common goal of denuclearizing North Korea. And also, President Trump want to show his victory over the issue of North Korea nuclear issue. Therefore, I really don't think that he would make an uh, imprudent linkage between n North Korean nuclear okay. issue and the issue, issue. Okay, the issue of denuclearization aside, Professor Moon, do you believe South Korea is also uh, part of the casualties inflicted by the trade war coming from Washington? Yes. Since South Korea is also accused of, uh, you know, the, the dumping steel and the aluminum. Do you think uh, um, Donald Trump is alienating 
and even antagonizing some of the American allies. What's going to happen next? Yeah, well, I think there will be a you know, growing concern on the or, you know, disparity between American leadership and American actual, actual American behavior. Because uh, now President Trump is doing is he's literally undermining liberal international trade order. Therefore, I think the growing number of countries may take a collective action to correct you know, President Trump's behavior. I don't know to what extent the domestic politics would influence him, but once there is a united voice abroad, okay, and I think the American position will be different too. From a third perspective of the ROK, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the uh, highly strained bilateral relationship, the most consequential one in the 21st century between Washington and Beijing? We are hoping that that will not take place. We are hoping that uh, Beijing and Washington are in good terms and good relations. Because when there is a uh, you know, hostile relationship between Beijing and Washington, its uh, eventual victim will be South Korea. Thank you so much. With that, we come to the end of this edition of Dialogue with the Professor Chung Yi Moon from uh, ROK. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>